What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Project Ozone Light. Oh, yeah, guys. So today, what I'd like to do is I'd like to take our machines that we have sitting up over here that we aren't really doing anything with. I'd like to take these and set them up in a place and get them talking to applied energistics so we can use them for auto crafting, right? That's the whole purpose of having machines really with an auto crafting system is so you don't have to do things manually. Now off camera, I did go ahead and I made some of the resonant upgrade kits and I've upgraded all of these machines, all of our thermal expansion machines over here to the highest tier and all of them have in the auxiliary reception coils. So yeah, these are all pretty much top end machines at this point, which is great. Uh, so yeah, we're going to take these machines, especially the thermal expansion ones. There's some things that we definitely want to be making automatically like in Darium and Signalum and stuff like that. I know we can also make those with the, uh, the inter IO machines. There's also a few other things that we want to do with these. So yeah, we're definitely going to go ahead and get these things hooked up. So I have installed yet one more level <laughs> in our main section here. So we have our applied energistics. Well, I guess our main entry level, right? We have our applied energistics level here with our, our storage or crafting and all sorts of AE stuff. Down here is the new level just directly below brought the cables down here. So we have access to stuff. I think this is where we're going to put our automated machines, things that we don't really need to see, but need to be connected to our applied energistics network. Right? So I think that just makes sense. Okay. So yeah, very first thing we need to do, let's go ahead and grab all of these thermal expansion machines. Uh, we are going to need, uh, to make ourselves another wireless power source thing. What are those things called? I can't think of the name of them. The dimensional transceiver. So this is how we're getting our power around wirelessly. So yeah, we need another one of these and that's all under IO stuff. How much of that do we have? We have everything. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and craft one of those. I was not expecting us to have everything in the system for that. I guess that's fused quartz. I must've made an extra ender resonator and maybe an extra ender crystal last time I made these things. Cool. So we have a dimensional transceiver. We have the applied energistics. Now, another thing that's going to be <laughs> a problem here. We have like the applied energistic stuff down here, but I don't have access to my stuff. So if I'm over here working on something, it's like, oh, I need another cable. I have to come over here and come up. So we should probably also look at making ourselves the wireless stuff. There's the wireless crafting terminal in here from password, uh, or from the wireless crafting terminal two mod, I guess made by password. Um, so yeah, we should go ahead and take a look at making one of these that requires any crafting terminal, a Fluex Pearl, which is an ender pearl and some Fluex dust, easy stuff. The wireless terminal, dense energy cell. We made a bunch of those last time and an Emmy terminal and a wireless receiver, which is more pearls, quartz fiber. So nothing here is super expensive. Now I did see in the AE2 stuff mod, there is this thing called a wireless connector. I'm not sure if this works the same way as the security terminal, but not making your system secure. Uh, I don't know. I kind of want to check this thing out and see what that does. There's also the wireless setup kit. Click wireless connector to bind. Maybe this is something different. Maybe this is for like remote applied energistics. Maybe we'll just do the, uh, the standard thing and make the, uh, security terminal this thing. So yeah, once you make the controller, the wireless crafting table, you have to drop it into the security terminal to link it to your system. So we'll make one of those that requires a 16 K ME storage and an ME chest, which I think we already have one of those. Yeah. So we already have one of those. And then we're also going to need the wireless access point, which is just more of the same kind of stuff. Nothing too fancy there. Let me go ahead and get a few of these things crafted up. We'll try and get some wireless going on to make our life easier and we'll be right back. So a lot of crafting just took place here and I made all of these different things. In fact, I did a little bit more than I said I was going to do. Like we made the AE2 stuff wireless connector and setup kit because there is in fact a quest for these things. I was like, hmm, you know what? Let's just go ahead and do it anyway. Uh, so I went ahead and I knocked out the 4k, the 16k and we've already done the 64k. I don't think we ever made those discs before. So I had to make a 4k and then convert that into a 16, 16 K to get those done. Uh, we've already done this one a while ago. We made the security terminal. We made the wireless access, but yeah, this one right here, wireless networking. So according to the text here, this thing apparently is similar to 
like a wireless dense cable, I think. So like you place one down, it connects and you place one over here and then somehow you're supposed to link these by like right shift, right clicking, shift, right clicking. Okay. So if we look at it, we can see there's a line that connects the two. I've never used this before, so I, <laughs> I'm still learning how this thing works. So apparently this should be connected to the ME system, right? So if we put some applesauce in here, it should just go away. And if we put a filter here, we should see it. So yeah, we have access to everything in the applied energistic system wirelessly, which is kind of cool. Uh, yeah, it says that it uses, what did the quest book say here? Go back to this quest. Each block will use 10 plus the distance, I guess, times two applied energistics per tick power. So it can get pretty pi pricey depending on how far away you want to put it. I don't know how this compares to using the other thing, the quantum link chamber. And I think you can only get 32 channels out of this, which in our particular setup, how we're using P2Ps for everything would be really, really good. But I just don't know if we're going to be using these. We'll see. If it comes to a point where it's like, hmm, that makes sense to use them, we'll check it out. But for right now, I don't think we're going to be using them too much, but it is kind of neat. I didn't know about those before. Uh, so we made the wireless crafting terminal and there is a quest for the wireless crafting terminal. If we go back in here. Yeah, I can't get this thing to complete. I guess it's slightly different in the NBT data or I don't know, but this one still says incomplete. I made the magnet card for it. And then we need an infinity booster card to complete this retrieval task. And the only way to get the infinity booster card, as far as I know, is to kill the wither boss. Pretty sure there's no crafting recipe for it. And that's how I've gotten it in the past. So the wireless crafting terminal probably can't do anything with it because it's not linked to anything. Uh, we also need to put the, the wireless access point somewhere. I guess we can just kind of put it right there and doesn't really matter that much. So that has a range of 16 meters and we can put in booster cards in here to extend that out. If we get the wireless in, or the wireless booster card, or <laughs> the infinity booster card for the wireless crafting terminal, we won't need any of those in there because it won't matter, right? Uh, we also need the security terminal somewhere on our network so we can link these things together. Why did that face that direction? I don't know. That's kind of weird. Uh, so if we come in here, we can put the wireless crafting terminal like this that links it to the system. And then we should be able to see stuff in here. Like it now opens up. Now the problem is though, this needs power. So we can't do anything with it just yet until we get this thing powered. So I was kind of thinking since this is wireless, we're going to be using it a lot. We're going to want it powered. We should probably have wireless power, right? So. Uh, let's take a look at this, the wireless charger from a Ender IO, really great thing. So this requires some electrical steel and a resonator and an octatic capacitor. We should have everything for this. When I used this before in project ozone two Kappa mode, this thing had like a stupidly large range. I think by default it only goes like 32 blocks away, but now when it went like a thousand blocks, I don't know how it's set up in this particular pack. So we could try setting it up over here and just kind of checking and see if it works all over our base. This needs to touch something like this capacitor bank. All right. And that is definitely charging up our thing. So let's go see if it charges up like for all the way down to the mob farm and other things. Let's just see what this thing is doing. Okay. So it does not work down here. We go up to this floor, not working not working, not working. Maybe it's 16 blocks, not 32 blocks. Oh, wow. That has a really limited range, doesn't it? So from the end of the room, it works. Wow. Okay. So that's not really good. Maybe what we're going to want to do. Oh my goodness. So many endermen here. <laughs> Maybe what we're going to want to do is on this level down here, we're going to have our dimensional transceiver, right? Maybe if we put it on this wireless power thing, it'll reach up here to this floor and not while we're here, it'll just charge up. I don't know. That's a really small range. And I don't think there's a way that you can boost these things any. I think you just have to keep putting them around. Yeah, there's like no interface. There's no way to increase the, the range of it. 
So that's too bad. I don't know why they didn't extend their range out like it was before. Anyway, uh, so now that this thing has power, we should be able to right click it when we're within range of our network here and see all the stuff in our system. So yeah, we'll want some of the booster cards so we can use this thing a little bit further away because uh, it should work when we're on our second floor here. Nope, does not work here actually. <laughs> uh, man, that's got limited range too, doesn't it? Okay, so yeah, we're definitely gonna want the booster card. So let's check that out. This one, yeah, the wireless booster. So this requires Ender Dust. I was looking at this a little bit. The Ender Dust is from Tiny Progressions, and the only way to get that is by putting a Ender Pearl through a quartz grindstone. What? <laughs> Normally, you can use the Ender IO powder, but it seems like this is limited only to this. I think. Let's try. Oh, there's so many Endermen here. Uh, Ender Pearl. I guess we could try putting some ender pearls through a sag mill and see if we get something that'll still work. Maybe it still works uh, with the ore dictionary. It just doesn't show up in JEI. I don't know. We'll try it. So there's nine ender pearl powder. Let's try this here. And that does not work at all. Okay, so that's nugget ender pearl. And the other stuff it said was a dust ender. Huh. Under dust. There's Endurium blend. Yeah. Okay. So, hmm. That's not going to work. So, we will have to make ourselves a grindstone. We should probably do that now. <laughs> Dang it. Grindstone. So, we have everything except for this wooden gear, which is just four sticks. Very, very easy. So, there's this thing. And then we need the crank for that, which is, I believe, five sticks. Clear that out. Leave us like that. Yeah. All right. I don't know how many of these we're going to want. Let's do maybe, maybe 16 pearls. All right. Let's set this thing it's right here. Should be fine. Pearls in there. Put the handle on top and hold right click. <laughs> okay. Well, let me go ahead and finish this up. We'll make those booster cards and we'll be right back. Okay, cool. So we made 32 wireless boosters. I don't know if we're going to be using that many because that's going to start making our applied energetic system use a lot more power. So right now, just to have the wireless access point, that's 16 RF per tick more than what it was using previously. Every time we add in a wireless booster, it does add more RF. I believe it gets bigger and bigger the more you put in or unless that configuration was changed. So all 32 in there starts making it use 378 RF per tick more. But you see that puts it at a range of almost 200 meters. I don't think we need 200. I don't think our base is more than like 80 might be enough. So that's 80 RF per tick. Now, if we come over and look at this, just to make sure everything looks fine. Um, that was saying like 6,000. Now it went up to 14,000. I'm not sure why it's making that much more power. <laughs> uh, okay. Something must have kicked on that's using a lot of power now. Unless I didn't update until I got closer. Not entirely sure. But it looks like we're generating enough power through our dynamos to keep up with that. Now, yeah, these things are all maxed out for some reason. It's kind of interesting. Oh, you know what? It's because I got closer to that thing, isn't it? The, uh, the wireless charger kicked on. That's what it is. Yeah, I get back away. You can see it's using 4,000. If I get closer... It starts wirelessly charging this thing. <laughs> That's what's taking all the power. All right, let's put that in here. Maybe that'll charge up faster. Or is it the same? No, I was charging it way faster. Now it's using 79,000 RF per tick. Okay, so now we're good. That confused me. I was like, why is that using so much power now? <laughs> okay, so yeah, we're only using 4,000 RF per tick right now. Four and a half thousand. So I think we're okay. So now that we have that done, we should be able to go to any level here and use our wireless and be all right. But yeah, as we saw before, that wireless charger doesn't seem to have a huge range. And having it over here doesn't make a lot of sense. So maybe, maybe what we should do, instead of having it directly on the battery here, we do have another dimensional transceiver, like up here on top. So maybe if we move that to the bottom, and then we can put the wireless charger directly on that. And then everywhere in this general area, we should keep our stuff charged. 
I think that's going to make more sense. So let's kill kill the power to our applied energistic system. It should be running off those batteries that we gave it, which is going to make it run for quite some time. We'll do that, and then we'll also put the wireless charger on there. Yeah, I think that's going to be good. So now when we're here doing stuff, looking in here, yeah, it's going to use some power, and then it goes back. All right, that's fine. Does that reach all the way down here? Oh, it does. It does. Okay, so simple, simple change, simple fix. I don't know if I like that right there. Maybe we'll move it over one block. Whoops. Where did that go? <laughs> All right, it's right there. So yeah, maybe we'll move it over one block like that just so it's not hanging down as low. I don't know. I think that's going to be just fine, though. So now that we got all of that stuff taken care of, <laughs> maybe we can get to the point now where we can start looking at hooking up these machines. All right, so I'll go ahead and put all of that stuff away that we don't need. Cool. So yeah, the magnet for this, there was a problem with this previously, and I don't know how that interacts when I have my coin of fortune on, but this is supposed to draw in items into your inventory, and if your inventory is too full, it'll just start dumping them in your applied energistic system, which is really cool. But yeah, again, I don't know how that really works. I guess it'll work just the same with my magnet here. Let's turn this off. Mm. So we have a magnet filter. We can whitelist and blacklist. Do we want it on blacklist? I don't think that's doing anything as far as putting <laughs> drawing items to us. Okay, well, anyway. It's supposed to take items that are in your inventory and put them into your applied energistic system when your inventory is full. At least that's what I remember it doing. But yeah, let's go ahead and get these things hooked up here. So I placed the machines down. We got conduits here. They both have power both sides. Underneath this slab right here, we have our dimensional transceiver kind of hidden out of the way. Yeah, that way we're not having to run the conduits all over the place. Whoops all over the place, all over the ceiling and roof and whatever. We can just kind of run them underneath the floor a little bit. I think it'll be just fine. Uh, so we have our machines hooked up like that. So a thing that I just discovered, it was recently pointed out to me while I was live streaming Modern Sky Block 2, is Thermal Expansion has this item in it called a mediator. This thing, a thermal mediator, which is essentially a heat sink. Now what this thing will do is this increases the speed of machines that are touching it uh, and it takes different coolants. So if you put in water, you get a 16.67% increase. I believe that's a random percent chance every tick that it can increase how much production is done by that much. Or you can also use jelly cryothium, which gives it a 50% increase, which is amazing. I think for right now, since we don't really have a good steady stream of jelly cryothium coming in, we'll switch to water, we'll get things hooked up, and then eventually we'll switch over to jelly cryothium once we get that all sorted. I think that's going to be really cool. So we are going to want to make a few of those thermal mediators here, so I would imagine we're going to want to make some patterns for that. So thermal mediator, this thing, yeah. So let's get a few of these patterns made. So in order to do this, we need copper gear, so we'll make a pattern for that. We are going to need glass and iron. Pretty simple. Let's make that copper gear so we can have the, the pattern for that. <laughs> All right, and then this guy, there you go. All right, so that's done. Let's find a spot in our applied energistics auto crafting for these new thermal expansion things. So that's a device. What is that called? The device frame. Make one of those. Cool. All right, so now we need to make a redstone servo. Pretty easy recipe for that. And 10 gears, we're gonna want a recipe for those. And that is a block of copper. I don't, you know, no, 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 we should have copper blocks in the system thanks to our compacting drawers. So we should be okay here. Gonna add all these things in here. And then we'll make a few of these mediators. Man, I don't know, how many do we want? Six? Six seems like a reasonable number. We should be able to craft those really fast, yeah. Very, very fast crafting with all of the auto crafting upgrades we've done. So we can place these here and these, do, the power conduit connects, but I'm not sure if these things use power at all. 
So it says cools down adjacent blocks, improving their speed. Just fill it with coolant and watch it work. Coolants have varying degrees of effectiveness. So we saw that water and the jelly cryothium are different. So I don't know if it if these effects stack. Like if we do this and this, like does our furnace get the buff from both of these? And if so, should we like do that for a pulverizer, move everything over one block? Yeah, I'm not really sure how these things work. I'm kind of new to these, so we might end up rearranging some things here to get them to work right. But yeah, I think that should be a pretty good setup here. And then we can do the same thing over here for our magma crucible and our fluid transposer. Yeah, we might want to shift those over one block and put another one where the magma crucible is. I don't know. Like I said, I'm new to these things. Didn't know about them until just recently. So still trying to figure them out a little bit. Uh, another thing is we might want to set up a magma crucible and a fluid transposer where the stuff always is being fed into this and then we feed items into here. So like this one will always be full of redstone and then anything we want to craft with the redstone fluid just goes auto crafting into the fluid transposer. We might want to do that for the glowstone and other such things. So this whole automatic thing will probably change over time. But for right now, let's go ahead and try and figure out a way to get water into all of these things. So we're going to want some way to auto fill something full of water. And then we're going to want to extract with these conduits so they can uh, feed into the machines all through that same conduit system below. So do we have any fluid conduits? We do have some under fluid conduits here. All right. So we will please. Yeah, I think they'll only connect to these particular machines, the thermal mediators. All right. And then we'll have to have something that's providing water that's being extracted out and then into these machines. Yeah, the thermal mediators also have a configuration for their inputs. So we're probably going to want those all on the bottom. Do that and that. Cool. All right. So I guess the best way for us to get water at this point, since I don't know of any other infinite water, is to use the transfer node. The fluid transfer node. Yeah, I think this is probably going to be our best way. We need the mining upgrade, and then we're going to need the speed upgrade and possibly the stack upgrade. Do we have transfer nodes? We don't have any of those. So let's make some of these. I guess we've never made the transfer pipes. All right. <laughs> Stone. There we go. I like the, how the craft for this gives you like 64 of those. They're very, very inexpensive. Achievement get pipes. Huh. All right. So we'll make this. Cool. And then we'll want to make the speed upgrade. We've made these before. Uh, probably, yeah, we're going to need the upgrade base. So that is the gold pressure plates. Just make four of those. Well, actually, if we're going to make whoop, up one too many, if we're going to make the, the stack upgrade, we might want to make another one. Let me just go ahead and do that. I set this up for auto crafting so I can get the stone burned a little bit easier. Uh, we upgraded the amount of GP we're creating here. I added a few more of these water mills in here and it looks like I missed, I missed some water sources here. I keep feeling like my water sources are going away. I thought I had one right there and there should be another one right there. Power generating eight. Why is it only getting eight? Oh, okay. I see what's going on here. I did make a mistake. <laughs> Somehow we have infinite water. Okay. I'll have to fix that. Whatever. Oh, game kind of froze there. Good time with scar was consumed by shadows. What does that mean? I don't know. Oh yeah. Cause we have the water source here. That's flowing that way. If we had two more, then we'd need them in the corner. Yeah, I screwed that up. These were set up correctly. Whoops. All right. Yeah, I'll fix that one. But anyway, I did add in some more of the water mills there. So we had some extra GP coming in. Uh, so let's grab our upgrade bases over here. All right. So we want four speed upgrades. And then we're going to want a stack upgrade. I think actually, no, we need the mining upgrade. Yeah, we definitely need the mining upgrade, which requires a golden pickaxe. 
I don't remember if the stack upgrade works on water or not. Okay, so we have that, we have this, we have the transfer node, we need the transfer pipe. All right, so we got those things all together. We need a place to store this stuff. I guess we could put it into one of the thermal expansion portable tanks. Mm, where's the thermal expansion portable? This, the portable tank basic. All right, so that's the redstone thing. We can just craft one of those real quick and one of those. And I think you can use the upgrade kits on these. That holds 20 buckets. So I think that's going to be okay for what we're doing right now. If it turns out we need more, we can always upgrade this thing later. So I'll put this thing right here. We'll set this to be extract only, always active. So that should be pushing water into the pipeline here. We'll have to get into these things. Use our Yetta wrench. And we want to switch that to the fluid settings. So shift left click on there and then we can get access to this. We want this to be insert on the fluid. Same thing on this one. Up. Insert. And this one, insert. Okay. So those should all be set up here. The only thing we need to do is give this thing water and then we should be pretty much good to go. Uh, we could set up a water thing here, I suppose. That should be fine. I'll just set that down so we can place this thing up against it. All right, then we can place three source blocks of water there. I'll move this torch. And then we're also going to need uh, something to keep the water in place. So I'll just grab some slabs. That is not enough slabs. Let's grab some stone. You think with the amount of slabs that I've been using, I would have that on auto craft. <laughs> I just don't. Uh, that torch needs to be moved again. All right, so we'll do that, 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 and that. Okay, cool. So water is gonna go here. We need one more source block. I got an infinite water source back over here by where all of our water mills are. We got our brand new infinite water source right there. <laughs> Still need to fix it. Uh, so yeah, we'll fix, or we will set this up down here to be the infinite spring. Fill up my water bucket again. And we want the transfer node to have mining upgrade and the speed upgrades. And then we will do that. So that should be pushing the water into here. You can kind of see on the tool tip that it looked like it had some for a little bit, which is feeding water into these guys. Nice, nice, nice. And then this thing should start filling up as well. So it's not filling up super fast. That's about as fast as we can get it for right now. I think until we get the upgraded version of the speed upgrades, but we'll look at that at another time. So this should be pretty well good to go. So we can test this thing out. So if we wanted to do gold, we can place gold into the pulverizer and just see if we notice yeah, it looks like you can kind of see how it goes smooth and it jumps a little bit. It's only going 16%, so it's not like a crazy huge jump. When we switch over to Jelly Cryotheum, it'll definitely look a little bit better. Okay, so we've seen that speed. Now, I'm kind of curious, uh, our redstone furnace here, does that go twice the speed? Will we notice it more? I mean, that's going pretty quick. Yeah, I guess it's hard to tell if that's really doing much. I guess I'll let that finish. It's really hard to tell if that's doing much with the thermal mediators. When we get the jelly cryotheum, it'll probably be really, really obvious. I am very curious though, with these thermal mediators, if this is gonna be a better furnace to use than the sag mill. Hmm. So we'll also need a way eventually to have jelly cryotheum being automatically generated and piped over into these machines. Yeah, that's another thing we'll have to figure out. Well, the final thing would be to get everything hooked up to be running off applied energistics, right? So just ran our P2P cable over here. We have a dense cable right here, right? And then we can just run this over and connect it over to one of these interfaces. These interfaces are connected with the cable. So that should see all four of those. And then this one over here, I put an interface on the magma crucible, which is probably going to be changed later. Like I said, this will eventually be like an export bus exporting redstone or whatever the case may be. But yeah, that's kind of like our general layout here. So we should see six channels being used as soon as everything links up, which I guess I need to click this with our memory card to do. 
All right, so once everything turns on, <laughs> we should see six channels being used, device online, six of 32, perfect. Okay, so yeah, now we should be good to go. Now a thing we can do is put in our pattern here, one sand equals one glass into this thing, and then we're gonna want to change this so it is accepting from the top. In fact, we can change it to push, pull, and auto input. No, we don't need to do that. We can do auto output. So yeah, we can set this machine up now to auto generate glass. I want to make a hundred glass. Let's do it. Start it up. There it goes. It is cooking glass. Awesome. So that's one of those things that I've always had to stop and <laughs> go back and make some more other things. We're probably going to want to hook up to be automated is like the hardened glass or an induction smelter, which means we're going to have to put obsidian into our pulverizer and set that thing all up. I'll start adding recipes as we need them, I'm sure. But for right now, we got everything set up. Yeah, so to be fully automated through applied energistics. Now, again, I'm not sure if the redstone furnace is the fastest and how much faster it will be when we put in the jelly cryothium. But for right now, it's going fast enough, right? I think that'll be just fine. All right, guys, we're going to go and wrap the episode up here for today. Lots more automations going on. This is my favorite part of <laughs> modern Minecraft. Getting things set up to be automated so I don't have to do stuff. Hmm. Anyway, that's going to do it for today. Thank you guys for watching. Remember to leave a like on the episode if you liked it. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye-bye.